Hey there, David here again. Today we're going to talk about making your own set of dumbbells with the DA Dumbbell Mold from Sticks and Stone. The things you're going to need along with the DA Dumbbell Mold are going to be lengths of pipe, three quarter inch inside diameter, bags of concrete, Quickrete 5000 or any kind of concrete that has a PSI of 5000 or higher, some silicone spray or paste wax. I'm using paste wax in the video. A bucket to mix the concrete in with, along with water and a food or body weight scale to measure out your dry concrete. You're also going to need some tie wire or rebar to put inside the dumbbell heads, a drill with drill bits to make the holes in the pipe, as well as a box of four inch long screws screws, some painter's tape and or duct tape, gloves and respirator if you feel necessary. Protecting yourself from concrete poisoning is a good thing to do. Some alcohol to rub and wipe out the mold in between uses, a towel, plastic trash bags to cover the molds while they cure, and some optional things are some wood scraps to hold the dumbbells in a vertical while they're curing the second side, as well as sandpaper and ways to personalize your weights with paint, plastic dip, truck bed liner, as well as markers and things like that to create the nominal weights on each side of the dumbbell. After you've collected all your items necessary for the process, the next step is to prepare the mold. You're going to wipe out the dumbbell mold to make sure it's clean and dry, and then put in your paste wax or your silicone spray to make sure it's on a level surface to make sure that the dumbbell is evenly balanced. After your mold is prepped, you're going to prep your handle pipes. When you get your dumbbell mold in the mail, it'll come with a sheet of instructions. On the back of that, of that set of instructions, there'll be a general guidelines chart of how long to make each pipe for each weighted dumbbell. So to start off with, if you're doing a 10 pound dumbbell, your pipe will be about eight, eight and a half inches long because the, the width of the concrete on either side will be about an inch to an inch and a quarter. So you have to take into account the width of the, each head to make the full length of the dumbbell so it sets correctly and it holds on properly. Once you've cut your pipes to length, you're going to drill in holes on either side to have screws anchoring through the pipe and into the concrete. This will create a strong bond between the pipe and the concrete to where there won't be any sliding or letting go of the dumbbell and possible cause of injury later. Once you have your pipes cut for the length and weight of the dumbbell you're looking to get done, we're going to measure the concrete dry. So you're going to pour concrete into a tub or a bowl or a mixing bucket on a scale to get the weight that you need. So the thing to think about, if you're making a 50 pound dumbbell, you need to pour half that weight minus the weight of the dumbbell handle and pipe and rebar inside each of the mold. So you will take 50 pounds and subtract the weight of your pipe handle, the screws and rebar or wire inside each head, and then take that weight that's left over and divide it by two. And that's how much concrete you'll use on each side. So if it's a 50 pound dumbbell, subtract two pounds of pipe, steel, rebar, and screws, it'll be 48 total pounds divided by two, that'll be 24 pounds on either side of the, of the heads of the dumbbells. So total, when you're pressing it, will feel and be 50 pounds. Once you have measured out your dry mix, you will then mix in enough water per the instructions of your concrete bag or your pre-mixed concrete to get a consistency of what would be best described as loose mashed potatoes. So you're able to mash it in your hand and it'll stand up, but when you vibrate the mixing bucket, it will level out and become more liquid this consistency will help with vibrating the bubbles out of the face of the mold and creating a very smooth very beautiful surface on the dumbbells once you've got it mixed at a good consistency you'll start pouring and vibrating the concrete inside the mold i'll just shake them with my hands and kind of tap them on the surface that i'm working on with that, that tapping and shaking it'll vibrate those bubbles off the face of the mold and get it to where it's a smoother surface. You also need to use baling wire or rebar inside for each of the head of the dumbbells. So make sure you cut that wire to length and make it into a circle or bend your rebar into that same circle that fits inside the mold and inside the concrete and doesn't show to the side walls. Once you have all your weight in the dumbbell mold and it's leveled out and shaken through, you're going to find the center of the mold where there's a center index that's raised a quarter inch off the mold. That is for the center of your pipe to set in and hold onto that center and keep your handle centered in the head of the dumbbell. This will help with a more even and more evenly balanced head of, the, of each side of the dumbbell. Once you have found the center and you've gotten everything vibrated and the screw anchors and the rebar are all covered with concrete, you need to tape the top of the handle to the side walls of the mold. Once they're taped, make sure that the handle is vertical and cover it with a plastic bag to keep as much humidity and as much fluid in the curing process for as long as possible during that next two to three days. The more you hold the moisture into the curing process, the stronger the process is. And you can now set this mold aside 
for two days to cure. Make sure you have an act of patience over the next two to three days, because the longer you wait, the stronger the, the dumbbell concrete will be, and it'll be easier to pop out later. If you don't wait long enough and the concrete's still very green and not set well, you can actually pull the handle out of the concrete and you'll have to start the process all over again. Now that you've waited two to three days for this first head of the dumbbell to set, it is time to turn the mold over, puts a little bit of pressure on the handle and then push down on top of the back of the mold to create an air pocket to let that first head release out of the mold. Once there's that air gap, it will come out very easily. Once you've cleared the dumbbell head and handle out of the mold, you're gonna set that to the side, wipe and clear out any debris or dust that's been left over from the previous setting, and then respray your silicone or rewipe your paste wax inside and start the whole process over again. Have your screws in the other side of the pipe anchored down and mix and pour the same weight of concrete you did for the first head and then set your rings of rebar, find your center index, reset the handle with the already set concrete head on the top and balance it perfectly. Now, I personally put a piece of tape on the bottom of my dumbbell molds where the lip is to make sure I know where it's set because I like to have both sides facing north and south so that the DA is on the bottom and the number, the number rectangle is on top to where they're even on either side. Um, this isn't really necessary as long as you have the corners of the hex head all facing the same in the right direction so they're, it's an even hex on either side that when you're laying it on your dumbbell rack on your floor it doesn't rock and it sets a little better and it's a little more even. Once you have it centered where you need it to be depending on what weight it is either using some scrap wood stuck under each side to where it actually holds itself vertical and then also you can and or use tape if it's a lighter dumbbell like your 10 or your 5 pounder you can strap tape across the top taping it to the side wall of the mold, therefore holding it in place so that when it cures and sets, it'll be a vertical dumbbell and the pipe handle will be even on either side of the heads of the dumbbell. Now it's time to cover it with plastic and set it aside and let it cure for the next two to three days. And once it has done so, you will pop it out the same way. You'll turn it upside down, put a little pressure on the, the top edge of the concrete mold and let that air gap happen. It'll pop right out. If you're having trouble, getting the dumbbell to come out of the mold, you need to create a little bit of compression on the back of the mold. So as you turn it over upside down and the mold is on top, you need to push down on the face of the mold to create a little compression to push the concrete away from the face of the mold, creating that air gap. So if you need to shim the side of it, if it's a 50 pound and there's no room for you to hold the, the bottom edge of the mold, shim up the, the, the each side of the mold and push down like you're giving CPR compressions and get to create that small gap and it'll come right out. Once you've popped it off, it's time to set it to the side to air cure enough or you can set it in water and water cure it for the next seven days. Once it's cured for a few days, there'll probably be a sharp edge on the where the top of the concrete was in the mold. What you'll need to do is just get some 80 or 120 grit sandpaper and just brush off that top corner to make sure it's a little more comfortable when using so that it doesn't make contact with your wrist or your knuckles while you're using it. If you're planning on making five pound dumbbells, it will get kind of thin with a high PSI concrete like Quickrete 5000. You'll need to find some stuff called Maximizer or add Pergolite into your concrete mix to make it a little thicker so it has a little more robustness to the usage of daily use. Once it's done so and it's dry enough to paint, make it your own. Use truck bed liner, Plasti Dip, spray paint, nail polish if you want to. Anything that you want to do to make it your own, these dumbbells are yours to create and make your own. This is a reusable mold. It's made from the same thick ABS plastic that we have for our plate molds. So where you can make as many dumbbells as you see necessary for your gym. If you just want 50s or just want fives or anything in between, you can have an entire set of five to 50 pound dumbbells for your use out of this one mold that you buy. The only thing that you could do is buy two or more to make it a faster process along the way. If you have any questions or you want to send pics to, to show what you've made with these molds, you can hit me up on the contacts page of the website, or you can find me on Instagram at sticks underscore and underscore stone underscore. Excited to see what y'all got.